The best way to create UML sequence diagram is to find available template. To do that, you need to search for UML sequence and it will bring in multiple results. Both of them have been built by Microsoft and most likely they will both work just fine for you. A couple things to consider here. Some of the diagram templates contain examples already. It's good to see how the sequence diagram may look like and you can preview this by clicking on the template and see the sample from the template. When you create new Visio diagram that has a sample, you see sample in the top and sequence of steps that might be helpful for you at the bottom. If you need to do sequence diagram with loop, you may consider using this sample. This sample shows you actor and two objects, as well as the interaction loop. And the last sample provided by Microsoft is even more sophisticated. It shows you interaction frame with multiple conditions. I will not be using any pre-built samples and I will just start from scratch. Once you create new Visio diagram using the template, you see multiple stencils available for UML sequence diagram. This set of stencils is everything that you need to create an effective sequence diagram to represent your system. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. Most of my career, I worked as a consultant helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills, which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in the community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. So what is UML sequence diagram? Sequence diagram is designed to represent how entities in the system interact and collaborate. In the example of online e-commerce store, when customer comes to the website, customer can search the system and system will return back the items that match searching criteria. The interactions between the customer and the store is shown by two lines. The first is the search line, customer sending a message to the store. And second is the line coming back from e-commerce store back to the customer. The big importance of sequence diagram is that it shows the sequence. And this is extremely important because sequence diagram is one of the few diagrams that shows and focuses on dynamic interactions between the entities. Sequence diagram also can represent optional events or conditional events. The example of optional event might be customer logging into the system. Logging into the system is not represented in this diagram, but maybe it should be. A lot of times, e-commerce websites retain your login information in the form of cookies, and next time you come to visit, you already logged in. Example of conditional interaction is shown in this frame. When customer needs to check out, they need to have an account in the system. If they're a new customer, they can create an account, but if they are an existing customer, they need to log in. The biggest power of sequence diagram is that it shows step-by-step -step interactions and focus on the order of interactions and shows them visually. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to online training for everyone. State-of-the-art skills, tips, tricks and techniques we share with you here on online training for everyone will help you today and in the future. We use scientifically proven methodology to create videos that will help you learn faster and retain more materials. When you click the subscribe button now, you will become connected and will be the first one to receive automatic notifications when new video is released. To start building sequence diagram, you just bring in entities from available list of stencils in the stencil box. The first entity would be a customer. Once you have entity in place, you can assign name to the entity by double clicking on the box. You see the font here is a little bit bigger, so we can select it and reduce the font size. We will have two other entities in this diagram, e-commerce store and payment gateway. Couple important considerations here. When I bring an entity, Visio shows grid lines. It allows you to place entities on the same level with other entities. It also shows you the distance between the entities, so you can place entities at the same distance. For the purposes of e-commerce diagram, customer is also called an actor. An e-commerce store and payment gateway would be called objects. Interactions between customer, e-commerce store and payment gateway would be defined using messages. And messages could be primary message, return message or self message. To define a message, we use message stencil. 
we just drag it and place it right on the lifeline and then we extend it to the next object. The first thing that customer do when they come to the e-commerce store, they search for particular item. Once you have message in place, you can double click on the message and type in the activity. One thing you might consider changing right away is the color of the message because green typically doesn't match well with blue and red. So I'm going to change it to black. To do that, you select the message and then select the fill and then click on the line to make sure you select the black color. To change the color of the text, you need to have the message selected and click on the font and select color for the font. Once customer submits the search for items they're looking for, e-commerce engine returns back the list of items that match search criteria. To represent the return message, we can bring in the new message stencil or we can copy and paste an existing stencil. Copying existing stencil might be more beneficial because we already have styles that we defined by changing the colors. To copy stencil, all you need to do is just select it and do copy and then just do paste. And then because this is a return message, all we need to do is to change the direction for the message. And then the last step is to assign what this message is going to be doing. We keep adding more messages as we continue to define the interactions. You can also use keyboard shortcuts like Control C and Control V to copy the messages. And now because we have messages going in both directions, you can copy the matching message with the matching direction. Once customer reviews the items available based on the search criteria, they can add items to the cart. An e-commerce store can display items in the cart. Once all items have been added, customer can start the checkout process. At this point, they will be presented with account screen where they can choose either to sign up with the new account or log in with the existing account. Because creation of the new account versus logging in with existing account is the condition, we would need an alternative block to represent this condition on the sequence diagram. To represent this condition on the diagram, we bring an alternative fragment right into the diagram. It shows Alt for the alternative condition and it shows condition 1 and condition 2. After you change the colors to adjust better to other colors in the diagram, you might end up with the block like this, which will have two conditions for registered customers that would be required to log in or for the new customers that would be required to sign up. And you can represent alternative actions with login message or create new account message accordingly. As our diagram continues to grow, we need longer lifeline messages here. You extend lifeline by selecting it and just dragging the end of it until you're satisfied with the new length. And we will continue with the customer checkout flow. Assuming that as part of the new account registration process, customer will enter the address, the next step would be for customer to enter the payment options. At this point, customer should be able to enter payment method. Once customer entered payment method, it needs to be validated with the payment gateway, which is another object in our diagram. And so far, this object didn't get any actions and didn't receive any messages. After customer entered payment method, e-commerce store will send the message to payment gateway to validate payment method. And at this point, we come to another alternative condition because payment method could be either accepted or rejected by payment gateway. If payment was accepted, payment gateway will issue payment confirmation. E-commerce store will be the first one to receive this payment confirmation. An e-commerce store would need to communicate the payment confirmation back to the customer. Successful payment confirmation typically indicates successful order confirmation because typically it indicates valid entry of the credit card information. As alternative condition, payment method could be rejected. There are multiple reasons why payment might be rejected, but one of them might be that the payment method is not valid. And in case entered payment method is not valid, e-commerce store would need to prompt customer to re-enter payment information. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.